Hello, what's up? So today I'm going to do something a bit special. I'm going to try to uh, work on the advent of code, which is a challenge that happens every year. Uh, so this is uh, Eric Wassel that is uh, just coding all the puzzles. And what happens is that you have one puzzle per day. And uh, yep. Uh, there's a couple of sponsors that make this possible because I guess it's a lot of time to come up with puzzles and uh, just make this a reality. Uh, so there's a leaderboard and a lot of people are competing to um, keep their lead in the leaderboard. And on my end, I won't be uh, really competing for the leaderboard, but I just want to uh, take the opportunity of this uh, coding challenge to um, show how I would uh, uh, tackle this kind of problem um, without having the pressure of the Twitch stream, um, without having the pressure of the time. So yeah, let's get going. So here we have uh, something about Santa. Santa has a problem and what we need to do is to collect stars. So I will just let you read if you want, just pause. But what happens is that um, we have to save Christmas. Uh, we have to uh, save Christmas by collecting 50 stars. And we have every day a puzzle. And each puzzle grants one star. So every day there is one puzzle that you can uh, read about. And when you're done with this puzzle, there is an extra puzzle uh, to bring an extra level of complexity. Um, so every day you can collect two stars. And that's it. So here, like uh, the idea of the the theme here is that the elves are loading us in a spacecraft and are preparing to launch us. However, there is something that's happening with the fuel, and we have to make sure the fuel requirement is met. Uh, and how do we do that? We have a module. We have the mass of the module. And uh, yes, we have to find a fuel required for the module, takes it mass, divide it by three, round down, and subtract two. So this is um, basic math, I would say. And I'm going to move the bubble out of the way. Uh, by the way, I'm using Loom to film that. So this is the, the company I'm working on that's providing this tool. And uh, yep, this is it. Uh, so. There are, there are a couple of examples to help us really understand what's happening. And yep, we are going to go with the examples first. We are going to try to solve that. And when we are done with the example, we are going to go with the actual complex question. They give you an input with a lot of module mass. And you have to find the sum, let me close this, the sum of the results. So yeah, first of all, I would really recommend that you start with the examples. And I'm going to do that in JavaScript. Of course, you know that uh, that's something that I really like doing JavaScript. And I'm going to do that in the console to really show that this is something that is really accessible to anyone. Um, so yeah. By the way, you can solve this in any language, no problem whatsoever. Uh, so let's call a function uh, f that takes uh, mass and that returns, what is it? The mass divided by 3. Mass divided by 3, round down to get 4. So in JavaScript, in order to round down, we use floor, especially we know that the mass is always going to be positive. So we don't have to deal with what happens when this is below zero. This is good. Uh, math the floor, and then we subtract two. So here, this is our function. And let's try to call f on uh, 12. You can see this is two already. That's perfect. On 14, this is two as well. This is what's expected. Let's copy paste this number here. 654. This is what is expected. And 33,583. 
Perfect. So we've got uh, our function that is uh, helping us. Uh, that is gonna. That, that was the function that was required to be coded. And now we need to get this input puzzle. So what I'm gonna do, I could copy paste that into the console, but that would be a bit dirty. So I'm gonna copy the link address, and what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna fetch that. Fetch is a JavaScript, uh, a relatively new uh, JavaScript uh, function that helps you get um, another resource. And then you have, uh, you have, uh, yeah, so sorry. I'm using the dot then here because this uh, function fetch is returning a promise. And so in the response, what you want to do is to get the text out of the response. And response the text is giving you another promise. So I'm just going to do then. And here we have text. And I'm going to share, I'm going to store this into uh, a variable called input that I haven't defined yet. So it's going to be initialized correctly. Uh, and I want to trim that as well. So remove the space at the beginning and at the end of the string that is returned here so that we have something that is clean. So I'm doing that. And now let's check what is in input, the variable input. And as you can see, there is a list. So sorry, this is a list, one string with one number per line. So this is perfect for us. What we're going to do we're going to split that by spaces so that we have an array of the numbers that we need, an array of mass. And now I'm going to, uh, for all these masses, so first of all, let's just go ahead and print this array. As you can see, this is a very long array. Oh, actually, there's just 100 uh, mass in this array. But what we're going to do is we're going to do use the function map to uh, find for each of this mass. Oops, damn it. I lost this. So for each of this mass, we want to return function f mass. Uh, we might want to use the parse int because this is a string. So we want to convert that into a uh, an integer and then pass it through the function f. So now we have our array of results, which is OK. And what we want to do is the sum for that. So we're going to use the reduce function in JavaScript. Uh, it's really good. So uh, what we do is a plus b, and the initial uh, value for this sum is going to be 0. And we for, for zero, we add the first element, then we add the second element, and we get at the end the sum of all these results, which is exactly what the requirements are telling us. What is the sum of the few requirements for all of the modules on your spacecraft? So this is a sum. I'm going to input it here. By the way, I'm already logged in with my Twitter account, so you need to log in in this, in this website in order to participate. Uh, I'm going to submit this. That's the right answer. You have one gold star. You are one gold star closer to rescuing Santa. So, yep, that's really cool. OK, so we have unlocked the part two of the problem. And what we can do is Continue focusing on this um, rocket launch. And there is something to s that stops the launch sequence. Uh, I need more fuel in the tank of the rocket. So what happens is that, oh yeah, of course, when you put fuel in the rocket, the mass is increasing. So you need to also take the mass of this fuel and add more fuel. And that's like a recursive thing. You need to add more fuel until really like there is no more fuel to add. So that's good. 
so what we're going to do is read the examples. So if there is a mass 14, it requ requires two fuel. That's what we computed in the previous problem statements. And then uh, if we try to uh, compute the, um, the fuel required for two, this is zero. So for 14, it stays two. But for a bigger module like this, it requires this fuel, then this mass requires this fuel, then etc. etc. Until okay, so we have to do the sum of all of these numbers. This is it. So, like on the previous problem statement, I'm just going to open the console thankfully because uh, just saying, just because. We have the last uh, function that I defined, the variable f. And here, what I would like to do is to avoid this number to go below zero. So I'm just going to do math.max between this number and zero. So that this will make sure that the function is never below zero. So which can try f12 is already two and f2 is zero. It is not negative. So everything is good. Uh, now we're going to have to use this in a for loop. So I'm going to create a second function, which I will call uh, whatever, fg, let's call it g. And it's going to take a mass. And here we're going to use, uh, we're going to use several lines because we want to make this clean. Uh, how do we do that? So first of all, we need a sum is equals to zero. And uh, we are going to have to do a while. Uh, so mass is equals <laughs> so I'm going to do several times here, several things here. This is going to be a bit confusing, but here I just want to have fun and the quality of the code isn't really important. So first of all, what we need to do is S plus equal F of mass. But at the same time, we need to store F of mass somewhere. So, uh, S plus equals F of mass is the idea. Um, okay, I think I'm going to do a while loop, which is while F mass is above zero. In that case, actually, the code is going to be better than I expected. <laughs> So here we call it uh, the sum. Here we add f of mass to the sum and we update mass to be f of mass. Uh, so yeah, um, actually I could do that better because we don't want to call several times the function f sum plus equal equal to mass. This is it. And uh, here we just need to make sure mass is more than zero. And we should have the correct solution. And in order to, to know if we get the correct solution, we're just going to use the example. Uh, g of 14. Okay, so we have one problem with a function. As you can see, it is not returning any value. Of course, we need to return the sum. Now, when we do g of 14, this is giving us 2, which is exactly what we were expecting. Now we need g of, sorry, g of 1000 like this number 1969 and this is giving us 
966. This is correct. Um, and we need another mass just to make sure we are doing the right thing and we have the right results. So this is really good. Next up is to do that again. We need the sum of all the fuel requirements for all of the modules on your spacecraft. Calculate the fuel requirements for each module separately, then add them, add them all up at the end. So this is what we're gonna do. And in order to do that, we're just gonna reuse the code that we wrote. We know that input has, it has already the correct information because this is the same uh, input. And instead of doing F, here, we're going to use the function g, and we know we're going to sum everything in the end. Input is not defined. I forgot that we reload the page. We have reloaded the page. So we need to fetch again the input. So this is the code that uh, I already ran. Nothing new. And this is the function that uh, now is working because input is defined. And this should be the output. This should be the answer. Let's try right away. Yes, so I'm happy to say that we were able to complete the day one. So if I return to the advent calendar, you can see, let me close that, the two stars here. So this is good news. We were able to uh, solve this. So yeah, that was it for the first uh, day of the advent of code 2019. Um, that's really an experimental video. So if you like this video, feel free to increment the like counter. Uh, yeah, I've said increment. Uh, <laughs> I was hesitating to share it, but yeah. That's going to be the thing here on this channel. So increment the like counter, increment the subscribe button. And if this is something that you would like to see again for the following days, feel free to also share this video to like a friend of yours that would like to see that. Uh, hopefully you've learned something about this uh, challenge. You've learned that it exists uh, or you just um, watched and uh, understood how to solve the first day. So I will let it uh, the next day to you. I mean, feel free to go ahead and solve the first day and the next days. And uh, I will try to release another video very soon uh, for the second day. Hope you liked it. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.